number one. You were close before. <laughs> yeah, I was. Oh, here it is. Okay. That's like, I, don't yeah. I, I wired these too, all right? I numbered them. Okay, so any guesses on one? Resistor. Yep. Passive resistor. Notice it's, even if I didn't know what that is, I, I could look at it. It's wired across both polarity of this capacitor, okay? Positive and negative. So, I mean, what could it be? Right? It would have to be. It could be another capacitor, which is possible, but more than likely we know it's a capacitor or a resistor. This is the passive drain, passive discharge resistor, okay? Um, basically, it's going to drain these capacitors and turn the system off. This is what dumps, what drains the energy here to, into heat, you know, converts it into heat. Load. Yeah. Uh, newer cars have an active discharge where the inverters will actually open up to drain the capacitors into the <coughs> stator of the vehicle, okay? into the stator. So that's that. Number two, Toyota capacitors used for, like I was telling you before. Are we, yeah. What's that? Parts identification saying what they're used for or just yes. the part? Okay. Yeah, Toyota capacitor, uh, you could say used for smoothing out voltage spikes okay. and lows, okay. yeah. That's fine with that. Filtering. Capacitors in general. Uh, Capac all capacitors yeah. in general, yeah. Let's see here. Three. Three. <laughs> it's been a while since I did. <laughs> That's three. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. there we go. Okay. Why is there a nail on here? You got nail. You're throwing stuff at it. Man. <laughs> All right. So three. Without even knowing what this is, you guys can assume. Okay. Permanent magnet rotor. That's what I want to get. A Toyota permanent magnet rotor. Is this one is. And do you want it too? Uh, well, you know what it is. You can guess if you look at the other one, but judging by the size of this with that stator compared to the other one over there, yeah. uh, you know this one's MG1. Okay, so you could put that if you want, MG1, permanent magnet, rotor out of a Toyota, even has this elliptical uh, ring for the what? Dakota resolver. Dakota resolver, yeah, because we're going to call them, ASC calls them that for position sensor, right? But I don't need that much. If you just put Toyota uh, permanent magnet rotor, I'm fine with that. Too. If you want to put MG1, that's cool. Uh, what is this used for? Or what would a good description be for this? Generator. Generator. Slash motor. Slash starter. Yeah, slash slash starter, motor slash in certain situations. Yeah. You could put any of that. Just slash. Uh -huh. That's fine. Okay. For MG. Um, four right here is the encoder resolver. That's what we'll call the encoder resolver. Yeah. Position? Just position. It's just rotor position. There's one on each rotor on these elliptical <coughs> rings on both sides of the MG1 and MG2. This is your, again, the position sensor. You guys remember this? It uses the sine, cosine, and then the exciter circuit. Basically wraps around inside here. And because of this elliptical um, ring right here, it's going to excite and deform, kind of deflect the magnetism in different coils. And that's what the computer's picking up for exact position. The cool thing about this sensor is it can detect exact position without any movement. Okay, any other sensor we have on a vehicle, there needs to be movement in order to detect position and rotation. This one does not. Okay, so that encoder resolver is what ASC calls it, so that's what we'll call it. Uh, number five is going to be this guy, I think. Yep. And what's this? MG1 stator. Okay, the stator. So how would you write a description of this? Toyota stator or MG1 stator? <coughs> what would a description be for this? Generator, starter. Same thing, three phase. Okay, this is what actually uh, receives three phase signal from inverter, rotates uh -huh. rotor. Rotating magnetic field. Yeah, to move the rotor. That's its job. Okay, and regen. Anything along those lines is fine. Uh, six. Where did I put six? Here it is. Right here. <laughs> so, what would you guess these three things are? Three phase? Well, these are three phases, but yeah. what are these actual components I have this number six on? Hall effect sensors, what are they sensing? Current. 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 You can tell by looking at it, these phases yeah. don't touch the sensor. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're, we're assuming it's an inductive current sensor. It has to be, uh, just by looking at it. Okay. Honda does have them on each three phase. Some manufacturers do not. We'll get to that one on the Toyota in a second. Uh, but yeah, Hall effect current sensor, just me measuring current in and out of this. It uses that in um, combination with the position sensor, the encoder resolver, and its software uh, commands to determine torque. Yeah. You know, applied torque. Okay. Uh, seven, underneath here, this black case. Inside that black case right there is the IGBTs, the IG bits. What does that stand for? So the gate bipolar transistors. Yep. Okay, this is where the magic happens. This, yeah. is the, this is the flux capacitor of hybrids and electric vehicles. Uh, what's that? 
one point twenty one. That's right. <laughs> so that what does that do? That's what rotates the field. Correct. That's what actually inverts from DC to the three phase AC. Okay. So you see the uh, DC is coming in, goes to this capacitor bank, the scrubbing uh, capacitor here, and then this goes into this IGBT where it gets inverted into three phases where it comes out. On this car, it only has the one set. On the Toyota, it's got two sets of IGBTs. You can see one right here. There's another one out of the capacitor bank because it goes to the other MG1. Okay. So this car only has the one. Why does this one only have one bank? It's got IMA, this Just one. IMA, one, one motor, motor, parallel, mild parallel um, chassis configuration. So seven and uh, eight. Eight. You're supposed to know where I put these. There's C9. Eight right here. Honda capacitors, same as the Toyota ones for the same, what they do. And then nine, you saw nine. Nine's down here. Yep. Okay, what's well, nine? If you had to guess by looking at components, what would it be? If you didn't know what it was, how could you know for sure? Connections to it, yeah. Right here. Yeah, I got two smaller, two small gauge high voltage yep. connections. Okay, two is in DC. Yeah. And if you notice when you disconnected, it came from the junction yeah. block coming yep. out of the SMRs. They're smaller, it goes to a module that looks a lot like that, and it also has an output that looks like an alternator. Mm -hmm. That's a DC DC converter. Okay, regardless of the car you're working on, you can always find it by looking yeah. for small gauge, yeah. you know, relatively small in relation to the higher mm -hmm. gauge um, wire cabling. A smaller gauge orange cabling high voltage with an output that looks very similar to the back of an alt mm -hmm. in a square box that's going to have a lot of heat sinks, like this one yeah. does. Okay, they create a lot of heat. So on the Toyota one is down underneath where it has this coolant tray underneath. So that's where that one rides. 10 right here. This looks very traditional. You see a lot of computer uh, connections right here. You know, that's going to be a control module. In this case, it's a battery management slash hybrid control module. Uh, 11. It's like a blower motor for the cabin, but it's not. came out of the trunk and it was connected to this. So you know it's a battery, battery cool. cool. Blower, yeah. Motor. That'll work. And 12, I think, is the case of one of these. This one. So 12 right here is the actual whole converter, inverter converter. Uh, assembly. They call it, we call it an inverter, yeah. but it has both. It's an inverter and <coughs> converter. Mm -hmm. And it's actually several of them on. Not in this one, but Gen 2 has two inverters and a converter on it. Actually, two converters. Two inverters, two, two converters. Because you have DC-DC converter, the boost converter, the main IGBIT inverter, plus the inverter down to the AC motor. So, But we just call them inverter assembly. It's just what we call them. So that's 12, 13 on this one is its, its inverter assembly, okay? So mm -hmm. it's case right here. This is the actual inverter mm -hmm. on the Honda, okay? 14, uh, Honda calls this an intelligent power unit, IPU, this whole thing houses everything. The battery control module, the inverter assembly, the computer, the DC-DC converter, all the air cooling. The whole thing together is called an intelligent power unit. So that's 14. Uh, 15, I believe, is an IGBIT right here. So these are your IGBTs, the one set, so you won't see the other set, the same thing underneath here. And you can see looking at how this works, DC comes in, there's these cables coming right here. So if you don't know anything about this, you can tell that the DC cable comes in and it goes to these two bridges that come up and then bridge all these capacitor polarities, okay, positive and negative. And then that goes down into the, on both egg bits, okay. But you can see it comes off this where the DC comes in, what's coming off of it right here? See those two cables coming off yeah. there? Those little ones? What do you think those go to? Yeah. The little ones underneath that connection. That, um... It's high voltage, though. Yeah, it's, it's high voltage. It's just, what do you think those go to? Little, little or smaller gauge wires? Um, Control module? The, uh, <laughs> uh, DC, DC. Correct. Converter. Yeah, that's what goes down. It just parallel off there, down underneath at the bottom. And inside this, this unit down here is the DC, DC converter. Yeah. Underneath that, it has coolant passages for cooling. Little worm, worm casings, kind of like in a valve body looking ish. All right, so 16 is what we talked about before. Again, looking at it, you can tell it's DCN, high voltage DCN from the battery. 17, what would that one be? Three phase out. Yeah, and you can tell by looking at both of them that this one's bigger. So, uh -huh. which motor is that one? MG2. MG2. Notice it has this little white box. Yeah. I have my finger through, you can see. You know, it doesn't touch anything in there, but what's that measuring? That's Those are their haul effect current sensors. Yeah. And they only have two versus all three. Uh, it's a complete speculation. Yeah. I'm guessing they're saving money. They don't need a third yeah. one because at any given time, current is going to be going through two of them. Two of them. Yeah, at least, at least one of these. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So they can see the direction it's going, and the computer knows what phases it's mm -hmm. exciting. Okay, so as long as it measures current one, it's a series circuit, it knows the current in the other one. Uh, 18 is... Cool reservoir! Hey, you're waiting. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Separate from what? <laughs> Separate from the ice? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same type of coolant, but it's going to be a separate system. Sometimes Hoped. they're the, sometimes they're the same <laughs> reservoir, and ice and hybrid, and they could have two separate systems. I've seen that before. That's rare, though. Usually, it's two separate cooling systems, two separate reservoirs, uh, because this all operates at a lower temperature. Okay, and this can immediately heat up. That's one way to check and make sure this motor's working. Because that's an overheat code. Remember, you take this cap off. You take this cap off right here, and inside here, you'll see this return line spitting coolant in here because that motor yeah. is on. As soon as you turn it in ready mode, that, that yeah. auxiliary 12 yeah, volt motor is on. It doesn't need to be on. hot like a thermostat. Yeah. These ones, these temperature curves aren't like an ice where it gradually yeah. warms up and then it sits, it sits at the top. Okay, this one, you turn this on and go ready mode, it can just go high, cold, high, warm, cool, high, like it can fluctuate real fast. So they keep the motor on all the time. That's one way to check if you have an overheat code. I'm looking for turbulence in that, that reservoir. And I'm gonna put my hand on the motor, which is down here on that frame rail, and I'll feel it, you know, buzzing at me. That's 18. 19 is right here. Which, using your reasoning skills, what would you say that is? Yep. Yep. That's high, high voltage, voltage DC, DC coming in from the junction block of the battery control module or the battery module here. Okay. And then 20. Here's what we give you for a beat. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson? Yeah. <laughs> so you see it right here, UVW coming out. It's a three phase out, goes underneath here, and it comes out, goes underneath the vehicle up to the IMA. The actual IMA motor, correct. So that's three phase, which is the cable you need to be careful of lifting and racking these cars, remember? Because yeah. the, the arms sometimes have cups, for little pockets that we sit them on. You don't want that coming up into a high voltage cable. Yeah, they're exciting. I mean, because against those... the lift, the button push, and you hit that. <laughs> Those oh, cables aren't yeah. repairable, like SRS cables are all the place only. Yeah. Okay, those are very expensive. Cables. Probably you yeah, don't want to do that. Very expensive. All right, any question on any of this? Because we're our ten minutes are more than up. And this shouldn't. Do you mind if this goes on YouTube? Yes. <laughs> uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say no. I just said yes. I want. Oh, okay. So I, I can throw it on YouTube. Sure. All right.